One dark night, about 10.30 p.m., I was driving about five miles outside Willow Creek, California. The road is cut through a very secluded forested area of thick brush and trees. It's a very windy and narrow road. As I went around one of the narrow corners, my headlights caught something moving in the trees, about 10 to 15 feet off the side of the road. I slowed down to look, thinking it might be a bear, and then realized it was moving vertically and walking upright through the bushes. I could see the glow of its eyes. It was approximately seven and a half feet tall, judging by the bushes around it. I suddenly knew where its head was, and it was too high to be a bear. No bear could make the fast movements this thing was making. I could see its head, shoulders, chest, and part of one arm. It had long, black-brown hair that drooped over the face and down the shoulders. Sort of like an orangutan. The face looked mildly similar to a monkey of some kind. It did not have a long, slender face like that of a bear, or anything else I had ever seen in the woods, especially for its size. There is no way it could have been any animal native to the area. I think the car started and startled it off, as it disappeared into the darkness and it was gone. I was too scared to stick around and find out what it was. I had my window down and quickly rolled it up as soon as I saw the thing. About a week later, a mile and a half away in that same area near the river, two friends of mine saw the same thing. A strong rotting smell is what caught their attention before they saw a furry, upright creature running off into the woods. Their description was of the same creature I had seen. A pilot and his newlywed wife were en route to Anchorage, where they would make connections for their honeymoon. The weather turned sour, so he touched down in a Cessna 180 or 185 on floats. He taxied to shore, where he and his wife looked for a spot to pitch their tent for the night. Having found one, he turned toward the plane to fetch the tent with his wife following him. He heard his wife scream and turned to see a hairy, bipedal creature running from the location towards the woods with his wife under one arm. The pilot chased after the creature, before realizing that he could best stop it with a firearm and return to the plane to fetch his rifle. He followed, seeing them three times before he lost sight of them. He found a particle of cloth from his wife's garment. The pilot spent the night in his tent and looked the next day and flew to Anchorage and reported the event to the Alaska State Troopers. They began a search, but were unable to come up with any positive results. The wife was never found, and the pilot was so distraught and became a basket case for years after. I grew up in a little town on the Bruce Peninsula in Ontario, Canada. We lived on the river, and past our property was nothing but pristine bush for miles. I remember one day as a small child being scared speechless when I looked into the tree line and saw Sasquatch. It was only 15 feet from me and was watching. I froze with fear. Then it turned and walked into the bush. I was about eight years old at the time. Five years later, I moved up to our cabin, and that summer late night at three in the morning, for about two weeks, I could hear something echoing up the river valley. At the age of 19, after being evicted from a house I was staying at, I moved into the most remote woods I could think of, to where I thought I could live undisturbed. It was near the end of March, and tough living out there with nothing. But I built a small place for shelter, in a thicket, and lived by the fire. The forest there is so alive, and full of life. I used to listen to all the different animals that would frequently circle my place. One night, I came back from a trip into the nearest town, and it was three in the morning. I had just arrived at my place after a long walk, and sat down to listen, as I always did. I heard footsteps walking in the same place I had just walked. Unmistakable heavy footsteps. It was something on two feet, and then it just stopped, about 25 feet from where I was, and it didn't make a sound. It wasn't until that moment that I remembered the screams I used to hear when I was younger, 
and that I was now living in the approximate spot downstream from where I used to live. I didn't move, and neither did it, for 40 minutes, so I just went to sleep. I'm 42 now, and thinking back, what a perfect place for a Sasquatch to live. There is no bush quite like that one of the Bruce Peninsula. I still roam the forest alone, day and night, unafraid, but always respectful of nature. There is so much we don't know or understand, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I know what I saw, and I know what I heard, and I truly believe. Oh, how lucky I am to have had these experiences, and others as well. Most people don't experience these things, because they aren't out there living in harmony with nature. I know the Sasquatch meant me no harm, just curious about me living on its turf.